Hi, this is a continuation for the uh, uh, slideshow uh, on the thermal consideration for power electronics devices. And uh, last video, we have considered this model as the electrical model that mimics the thermal flow from the junction to the ambient. And we have defined the uh, thermal resistances and we knew how to uh, get them from the data sheet. And we will elaborate on that and to uh, solve some questions just to make uh, a you practice how we solve the uh, junction temperature or use it for a design and estimation of any other uh, temperature point. So we have the first question, which is we have a BGT transistor, which is VD139, has a maximum power dissipation of 12.5. This is something that is gotten from the data sheet. Uh, and this is the maximum power dissipation. So it means I can dissipate, or this, this transistor can dissipate 10 watt, can dissipate 9 watt easily, and also can dissipate 12 watt without any problem. But that is at temperature of the case of 25 degree. And the maximum operating junction temperature is 150 degree. I have to maintain that. Now find the following. But before finding, just let's us draw the, 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 the electrical uh, model of that one. So we considered uh, that the power dissipation is represented by a current source with the same value as the power dissipation. So if you have power dissipation of, for example, 10 watt, that current source will have 10 ampere, okay, as a value. And we then go through the, uh, uh, the first thermal resistance, which is from the junction to the case. And because we don't have here the ambient and other other things, so it's just uh, considering the first thermal resistance, which is this one. Now, the uh, temperature as the junction is not known, okay? But we know that the maximum of that junction should be less than 150 degree. And we uh, consider the temperature at the case as 25 degree. Now, the power dissipation, it says here 12.5, if we consider the max. So let's find the thermal resistance are theta between the junction and the case, this one, okay? So to know the, the theta, we have to recall the thermal Ohm's law. And I think you remember the thermal Ohm's law. It's the uh, uh, current, which is the power dissipation, times the resistance equals the different uh, difference in voltage or temperature here, okay? So this is, you have to find a way how to, how to remember this. So the, the power dissipation always is the reason of the different temperature uh, divided by the resistance, okay? And what we mean by temperature here, different temperature, now we have just two points with the junction and case, so we can really uh, uh, just uh, um, explain this as junction temperature minus the case temperature divided by the power dissipation. This is now the resistance, okay? So I think this is very easy equation. Now the maximum temperature of the junction is 150. The temperature of the case is 25. And the ma maximum power dissipation is 12.5. And that will give us the uh, resist a thermal resistance, which is 10 degree per watt. Okay. So for every watt dissipation, the uh, temperature will increase by 10. Okay. So this now this value will be fixed. Uh, for this transistor because that value is not actually changeable uh, if the temperature is increased or decreased or something else happened until you change the geometry of the uh, transistor and because the geometry is fixed so that value is also fixed now uh, the second requirement is to calculate the maximum power it was 12.5 watt if the temperature of the case now is 50 degree now that a maximum power can be really considered as maximum without damaging the MOSFET if the temperature of the case is 25. But now for some reason of the temperature of the case now is 50. And maybe that happened uh, if the MOSFET is inside an enclosure. Okay, that might happen. So what is the maximum power I can really consider as maximum and I can't exceed it? Again, recall the thermal Ohm's law, this one or this one, they are the same, okay? So after recalling that the power dissipation maximum equals the difference or maximum difference between the junction and the, um, uh, the case divided by the thermal resistance. And we know the maximum is 150. 
The case now is a new one, which is 50, and the thermal resistance is fixed. It doesn't change by the uh, thermal or uh, electrical uh, conditions. So it will be 10 watt. So instead of 12.5 watt as maximum, now at 50 degree, I can't dissipate more than 10 watt. And if I did, I might risk my MOSFET. Now, or my uh, transistor, BGT transistor. Now, what is the junction temperature, which is this one? If my case is still at 25 degree and the device is dissipating 5 watts. So all of these can be actually calculated by the same um, uh, uh, thermal ohms law. Okay, so the power dissipation now is, is not 10, is not 12.5, it's just 5. And I want to know... Uh, how much um, uh, the, the, the junction temperature will be just to uh, uh, to build some 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 expectation okay so the 5 watt will be instead of this uh, power dissipation and the 25 degree is is this one is this the, this one and the junction temperature is the unknown and the thermal resistance is the same so we use it as again thermal resistance equals the temperature difference divided by the power dissipation and again the junction temperature it is 75 degree okay so that will give you some some feeling about okay how much it needs to be 100 or less or higher and you can consider other things if you want okay so this is the easy one that we really can just use to uh, to remember the uh, thermal ohms resist uh, ohms law Let's now go to another example, and for this example, I want you to read it and um, see that here is the um, expected answer, okay? So you can read this question and try to solve it by yourself uh, for five minutes, and if you still struggling, you can come back and try to solve it. So if you like to practice it, just stop the video and try it now. Okay, now... The average loss of this IRF840 MOSFET is determined to be less than 2 Watt. So we have the power dissipation to be less than 2 Watt. This is very important, okay? And the device will be used in an, in an industrial setting with an ambient temperature range of minus 20 to positive 85. So the temperature setting for the ambient temperature is 85, not a 25. And you might ask why they consider 85? Because most of the electronics and boards in the industry, they are contained uh, within an enclosure. And that enclosure sometimes doesn't have good ventilation. And even if it has some ventilation, still there's some temperature trapped inside and the temperature is not 25 definitely. So that's why they consider some some uh, values which is higher than 25, uh, which is now 85 to be considered in their calculations, okay? So now, let's consider as that the temperature ambient is 85 degree, okay? Not 25. So determine if a heat sink will be required, and if so, what is the required thermal resistivity uh, of the heat sink? So we want now to see if we really will it break the junction temperature or no? So what is the junction temperature that should be considered? It should be 150 or less than 150. I will calculate now and will draw the, uh, the, the, the flow of the heat by the electrical model, but I have to consider that I don't need to exceed the junction temperature above 150. If I did that, that means I need a heat sink, okay? So the first, condition is without heat sink and again to start i have to see the power dissipation equals the difference in temperature divided by the resistance okay now if i want the the temperature between junction to the ambient i have to consider the uh, resistance to be between also the junction to the ambient okay so now that will equal temperature of the junction minus the temperature of the ambient, okay, divided by the thermal resistance of the uh, junction to ambient, okay. 
Okay, now the temperature of the junction, this is what I want to know if it exceeds 150 or no. Minus the junction or the temperature of the ambient, which is 85 given, divided by the thermal resistance from the junction to ambient. And look at these resistances from the data sheet. It says here we have junction to ambient, this one, okay? It equals 62. And the second one is the greased one. That means it's considering a heat sink. And third one, junction to case. So I think from junction to ambient without heat sink, I can consider what? This 62. Okay? So 62. And that will equal finally. Now the power dissipation here is the 2 watt. Okay? So that means the uh, junction temperature equals the 2 watt times 62 plus 85 and that will end up with 209 degree and that's much more than with the 150 degree that means i need a heat sink okay so uh, this is will not work without heat sink so now let's consider a heat sink and if i consider the heat sink i will actually consider this resistance and that resistance and also the heat sink thermal resistance but it asks about what is the uh, thermal resistance for that heat sink and again let's write the uh, thermal ohms law the power dissipation equals the difference of the temperature between the junction to ambient okay but now we have heat sink that means i have to consider the resistance between junction to the case and the junction or the case to the heat sink and from the heat sink to the to the ambient okay you can write it by by any way you like no problem and that equals now the power dissipation is 2 watt equals the temperature of the junction minus the temperature of the ambient and that is 85 divided by what is the uh, thermal junction to the case according to this uh, junction to the case equals here about one so i will consider one plus case to the heat sink so i have here case to the heat sink but it should be greased okay so i will try to make it greased as well for example practically so it's a half and now the heat sink to the ambient this is what i want to, to know okay so the temperature the thermal resistance for, for the heat sink to the ambient okay this is what i want to know now i want to know that resistance to keep the temperature of the junction at least or at maximum 150 degree okay this is this is not a good design by by the way if i want to choose a heat sink i have to choose uh, the junction temperature to be less than 150 for example 100 okay but i just want to uh, study the worst case scenario so now i think you will uh, be easy to to just to calculate that one Okay, by just manipulation here, you will end up with R theta for the heat sink to the ambient equals 31 Celsius per watt. Okay, and that is the answer. So in the market, you have to go for any uh, thermal resistance for heat sink to be less than 31. Okay, not more than 31, less than 31 because we want less temperature rise per watt okay and that will make the 150 to be uh, to be achieved uh, but for proper design you have to consider the uh, temperature of the junction to be less than 120 or 100 and now here is another example so we have to220 this is a package low drop out voltage regulator lm2940 so we have a voltage regulator supplying a 0.8 ampere 5 volt load from 9 volts so that means this is my regulator it has 9 volt as input 
and output as 5 volt okay and the current going from that to that for example is 0.8 ampere okay so if we want to know what is the power dissipated by that regulator it equals the voltage drop by that regulator okay so this is the regulator okay uh, multiplied by the current okay and I think the voltage dropped by this regulator is 9 minus 5 which is 4 volt okay so I have here 4 volt times the 0.8 ampere as considered passing through that uh, regulator and that will come up with 3.2 watt so now the power dissipated by this regulator is 3.2 watt which will be considered as the current value in the thermal model so the question now it says calculate the junction temperature so we want to know what is the junction temperature without and with a heat sink and the heat sink is this one and we have the uh, data sheet uh, curve as this okay and for for this uh, regulator we have also these thermal resistances from the data sheet okay so okay without and with so let's consider the first case which is without and without the heat sink i think we should go to the junction to ambient thermal resistance and when we look at that i think the first one is what we want okay the junction to ambient thermal resistance and we have here different values for different packages and because our package is to 220 i think this is our value 23 so the the thermal resistance between the junction to ambient from the the, the data sheet is 23.3 okay and then i will write thermal ohms law which is the power dissipated equals the temperature difference divided by the thermal resistance okay and if the temperature is between junction to ambient so this one also between junction to ambient and that means the temperature of the junction minus the temperature of the ambient and because the question didn't uh, mention anything so i will consider it as 25 divided by the thermal resistance from data sheet is 23.3 so in that case all that will equal the power dissipation which is 3.2 watt okay i think i can really calculate the temperature junction which is 23.3 times 2 3.2 okay and that uh, will add up to 25 ambient and that will end up with 99.24 degrees celsius and that's I think very acceptable okay so without the thermal uh, the, the heat sink my junction will be about a hundred degree and that's very acceptable but remember we have considered the ambient temperature to be 25 and if that regulator is enclosed with an enclosure and maybe installed in an industrial environment I think that's not a good sense okay if we consider now that the temperature of the junction equals the same 23.3 times 3.2 but I add this time not 25 degree for example the industrial setting which is 85 this will end up with 159.24 degree okay 0.24 degree and I think that's very dangerous and risky so now you have to decide if you are really uh, considering 25 and you are sure that 25 degree is your ambient all the time or you want to make a big margin and consider the ambient to be 85 degree that will make your design thermally more stable okay so based on the 85 degree ambient i think our a regulator needs a heat sink okay because it can't actually withstand the 160 degree for example so now let's consider a heat sink and now for the heat sink i want to consider also two cases uh, with natural cooling and with forced cooling and the natural cooling and forced cooling 
makes the resistance, thermal resistance for the heatsink different. And we can bring the, or uh, got the, uh, the, the thermal resistance for the heatsink in natural cooling by looking at the curve. And I think because we have here the, uh, this heat sink, okay, so it's the middle one, okay, that one, all right, this one, okay, and uh, look at the natural cooling, which are the three curves here, okay, and look at the middle one, we are looking at 3.2 watt participation, okay, so I think it would come up at this point here, 3.2, okay, and if we go like that, so I think it will end up with about 20, 28 or 25. So see, let's take it as 25, just to make it very easy, okay? So the, the thermal resistance here, which will be 25 divided by the 3.2, okay? And that will end up of 7.8. Okay, and nearly, let's take it as 8 Celsius per watt, okay? So this is how we get the value for the natural uh, cooling. But what about forced cooling? Forced cooling, we have to go for DC3. And now I will consider that I have uh, 500 uh, air velocity. You can, you can just uh, make up this value or just estimate this value or assume this value uh, if it's not given. So for 500 here, I think I will end up with this value, and that value will go to the 4. That means my resistance is 4, Celsius per watt. You might ask why I divided here, but I didn't divide here, because the axis here, it says it's Celsius per watt, okay? So look at this axis, it's Celsius per watt, but this axis is just Celsius, and here is the watt, okay? So I have to divide here in the first uh, case, but second case I don't need to divide okay so we have two different uh, uh, our resistance a uh, thermal resistance and I have to consider now the thermal ohms law again so now the thermal ohms law it says that power dissipation equals the difference in temperature between junction to the ambient okay divided by the all resistances between junction to ambient which is junction to case and then case to the heat sink and then heat sink to the ambient okay so this is the flow now, the, we want the uh, uh, junction temperature, so that's why we have here 3.2 Watt equals the junction temperature, which is not known, uh, minus the uh, uh, temperature of the ambient, which is 85, I will consider it in the worst case, okay, plus the RJC, JC, uh, junction to case. We have here two values, which is the top, and bottom and this is really weird okay we have junction to the case from the top side of the MOSFET and junction to case from the bottom side of the MOSFET and they they just uh, give us these values because some some heat sinks that they can really uh, fit on the top side and maybe they can attach by some way to the top side okay but usually we consider the bottom side of the MOSFET to be attached to the heat sink so that's why I will ignore the top side and we'll take the bottom side. So now the bottom thermal resistance from junction to the case is 1.1, okay? So I will consider this value as 1.1 plus R from uh, from heat uh, from case to the heat sink. It's not considered here in the in the table and I will say I will add grease and maybe add uh, everything make make the surface very good and choose good good quality one and I will try to assume it's 0.5 plus our heat um, sink to the ambient which was given before from the uh, uh, from the graph on the right which is 8 okay and that will bring us to a temperature of the junction to be 115 0.75 degree okay which is a little bit more than the 100 degree but still in the safe region because the maximum is 150 so with heat sink without uh, force cooling without a fan I think we are safe but let's now compare with a fan or with force cooling and I think what will what will uh, change is this 8 will be 4 
okay and after recalculating the temperature of the junction you will end up with 102.92 degree okay and I think you have a little bit not very huge difference okay so you will decide later if you will consider fast cooling or no but the difference is about 13 to maybe 12 uh, degrees Celsius okay and that's how we calculate the junction temperature and decide if we want to use heatsink or no and the final point I want to cover before closing this topic is something additional which is extra information you can read about this uh, from different references which is power cycling and cycle by cycle junction temperature and just I have here one example if I have uh, a MOSFET and we are pulsating that MOSFET and at the own time we are dissipating about 100 watt for 100 millisecond okay and uh, and the temperature is expected to rise during this dissipation of that power okay and it will rise from t1 to t2 and then there is a off time that off time is is a bit longer okay whatever the period here okay it's it's a long one okay and the duty cycle is still 20 20 percent and the temperature will decay to some value and go on and we talk about here steady state that means the temperature there temperature there will be equal okay now let's consider another case with a little bit higher frequency we kept the same duty cycle here 20 percent here 20 percent and now the tp is one millisecond which is the on time is one millisecond look at the temperature rise here the temperature rise is very short okay what's the conclusion okay look at the temperature difference between the start point and end point of the temperature of the, the temperature uh, while we are giving the on time okay so the temperature here from the t1 to t2 there is a big difference which is 80 degree but look at the higher frequency one it's about 30 degree okay so if you are considering uh, for example if t1 here is is 100 that means your temperature your junction temperature will rise to 180 degree and you think no you are at the safe side but uh, because we are <clears throat> making the making our own time longer okay and the frequency is very is very low that's why the temperature has a chance to grow and to grow uh, inside and make a big difference okay but for the a higher frequency I think because the short duration of on time and uh, 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 frequently I think the temperature doesn't have the chance to grow more or faster because they are uh, they have inertia okay so this is the point that I want to consider and that's why sometime they use the higher frequency uh, in some applications for example they use megahertz instead of um, kilohertz for some application that can accept that just also to to uh, to reduce the stress the thermal stress on the uh, um, uh, power devices and to make the chance for the uh, temperature to increase lower and to maybe to build more knowledge about this and the effect uh, of this on the uh, derating uh, uh, of the capability of that uh, MOSFET I advise you to read about SOA which is surface operating area which describe for you the thermal limits that you can uh, work inside just to make your MOSFET uh, uh, stable or safe without any problem uh, that brings me to the end of this lecture I hope you got an overview about thermal consideration and how we um, calculate the junction temperatures and the limits for uh, uh, for our MOSFETs if the temperature is above uh, some limits. So thank you very much and see you in the coming videos.